Hi guys, uh, welcome to my talk today. Uh, I think like uh, Janice had mentioned just now, I'll walk you guys through how Cloud Run is used as a webhook for data ingestion and uh, also on building live-ish dashboard. Uh, I do hope that it's live, but uh, it's close to live, so it's live-ish dashboard. Uh, the main outline today is, uh, I'll talk a little bit about me and we will go through what is Cloud Run uh, and comparison between Cloud Run and Cloud Function. Uh, problem solution architecture and uh, can we do more with Cloud Run? Uh, because uh, I personally, after I know Cloud Run and using it for my projects, I fell in love with it and I just want to share with everyone on how great Cloud Run is. Uh, so a little bit about me. <laughs> I'm a data scientist at Settle, uh, based in Malaysia, previously in AirAsia, uh, Kaltem and also ICAR. Uh, I love machine learning engineering, especially ML Ops and the technical side of things like data engineering, data science. I think why, because maybe because I like to get hands-on and also uh, as, the, as you can see from pictures, I love to uh, uh, play with tool, uh, use tool and uh, loves to build and experiment with different solutions for different problems. Uh, I, I like solving complex problems using data science. I think uh, that's the way to go for me. So that's about me. Uh, with that being said, let's get right into what Cloud Run is. So it is a fully managed compute environment for deploying and scaling container side without you know, worrying about the provisioning of machines, configuring clusters, or other scaling. So with all of this jargon, right, to put it simply, Cloud Run is something that helps you to run your container, uh, run your container without you worrying about the infrastructure side of thing, like provisioning machine, configuring cluster, and auto-scaling it. So it makes your workflow much easier uh, in terms of uh, deploying and scaling your, your apps. Uh, so, so this is what Cloud Run is about. Uh, why I love it, I think some key features here would include, uh, one thing is no vendor lock-in. <laughs> because it's built on open source standard Knative, you can easily port over your application uh, to on-premises or any other cloud environment. Uh, so, and it's also fully managed and it helped abstract away all the infrastructure management. So what this does is that uh, microservices deployed in Cloud Run can scale automatically just based on the number of incoming requests. No, you don't have to worry about configuring a full-fledged Kubernetes uh, cluster and it can scale to zero uh, and somehow it will redu reduce the cost for you. Another thing that I love about Cloud Run is uh, it offers uh, traffic splitting or traffic management uh, built into it. Uh, you can use Cloud Run to split traffic uh, between multiple revisions and also perform your gradual rollouts for your product, for your model, for your app uh, through Canary deployment, blue-green deployment as well. And there is also many other key features like uh, custom domains, uh, and also automatic redundancy. But I'll not talk about them, uh, two extra key features, but uh, this is the key features that I love and how uh, it made me choose Cloud Run over Cloud Function uh, for my project. Uh, so like we said just now, we want to compare between Cloud Run and Cloud Function. So uh, I think first thing first is that in order to run Cloud Run, it requires you to have expertise on containers, building containers and uh, operating them. But for Cloud Function, uh, mainly you just need your code. Uh, for Python, you just have to write your main function. Uh, that will be enough uh, to run your Cloud Function already. Uh, but another thing in terms of uh, handling concurrency, uh, both of them can handle concurrency, but uh, Cloud Run handles it much better with a lower cost in long run. I think we will get into this later as well on why why it's much better to choose it over Cloud Function for concurrency. And uh, as Cloud Run is running on container, then you can build it with any languages. And But with Cloud Function, it's only limited to Python, Node.js, Go, uh, and many other else. But I think I'll just highlight these three of the uh, languages involved here. So uh, like we said just now, use Cloud Run if, uh, so for me, it's I use Cloud Run because uh, maybe because my language is not supported in Cloud Function, then I choose Cloud Run. Uh, but mainly I'm I'm focusing on the large volume and concurrency involved because 
uh, at the end of the day, it's event data that I'm, I'm working with. Uh, we'll get into this later uh, on what kind of event data. So in terms of large volume concurrency, uh, cloud function, uh, it's not good because uh, actually we are sending one request at a time and spinning up uh, each function instance. So every time you send a request, you are spending uh, speed, spinning up a cloud function instance. But if it's cloud run, uh, then it's uh, configured to send multiple concurrent requests. You know, So this is very helpful in uh, improving your latency, reducing your costs, if you're expecting large volume, especially uh, what we're working with uh, back in my old company. Uh, and also a very sp specific thing, which is longer request timeout. Because it is a webhook, sometimes uh, we would expect a timeout. So in terms of longer timeout, uh, for cloud run, it is as high as 60 minutes. But if it's cloud function, then highest that you can go for timeout is nine minutes. So that's why I choose cloud run over cloud function for my specific use case. So once we talk about what cloud run is, what it offers, and why I choose cloud run over cloud function, then we need to talk about how it works, right? Uh, so I use it as a webhook. Uh, but there is many other ways that you can use uh, cloud run, how you can trigger it. Uh, three main thing uh, or uh, three main trigger that uh, I've worked with and also uh, and there is other trigger, but I just put three of them uh, because uh, three is a better, <laughs> better explanation for me. So in terms of webhook, I'm using a HTTP, HTTPS request uh, to trigger my cloud run. Uh, cloud run. Uh, so you have to understand that for each cloud run, uh, they actually have their own uh, HTTPS URL that you can uh, trigger it. So cloud run comes with its own HTTPS URL. Uh, so some possible use case here, if you want to use it for a web hook, uh, custom web API. Uh, in terms of pub sub, uh, typically we use uh, pub sub to trigger cloud run because uh, it's useful to talk between GCP services and you can push your pub sub message to, uh, to the cloud run endpoint and the message will be subsequently delivered to other containers as HTTPS uh, requests. Uh, another simpler thing, uh, if you want to use it maybe uh, for scheduling something, you can use Cloud Scheduler. Uh, it's offered by GCP. Uh, you can use Cloud Scheduler to trigger your Cloud Run uh, service on a schedule. Uh, so this is very similar to your cron job. Uh, so, so yeah, so it's Cloud Scheduler as well. So my use case here is using Webhook. Uh, which is through the HTTPS uh, endpoint available. Uh, so let's get into the problem. <laughs> uh, so the problem here is that we uh, we want to in ingest events data coming from third-party vendor or a third-party data source for your case. And we the business stakeholders wanted to monitor this live data on a live dashboard. And since it's live data, it's streaming data, then we need the services or we need Cloud Run to be able to handle up to 100 events per second uh, and also handling concurrency because uh, every time a user did something, uh, different users are doing it at the same time, then uh, you, you would need it to be, uh, be able to manage it concurrently. And we need to transform the data before loading it uh, to be viewed by the dashboard. And also, when no one is using it, then we have to scale it down. Uh, let's say if it's midnight, no one is doing anything, then you need to scale it down all the way to maybe one or zero. So that's the problem that we're working with, and I've chosen Cloud Run for it. Uh, I, will, I will not be showing any code uh, at the moment because uh, I think it's, it's not good to share code uh, that I've worked with uh, since uh, it's, it could be proprietary or it could be, uh, let's just say we don't we don't show code here. But I'll walk you through the architecture and I'll walk you through the solution that I have in mind and what we have worked on uh, at that point in time. I think it's still working on right now at the moment. Uh, uh, so this is the entire architecture. Uh, it might seem overwhelming at first, but I will try to break it down bits by bit. And so 
let's start first by understanding how we build Cloud Run and how do we get Cloud Run up and running first before we use it as a web hook. Let's get it done uh, right away. So in terms of getting Cloud Run up and running, uh, I use, uh, I can't find a picture for Cloud Source Repo. Uh, so we start off with a Cloud Source Repo here, uh, where I put all my code uh, and store all my code on Google Cloud, uh, Cloud Source Repo. It helps me to keep track of my code changes in terms of code versioning. Then after that, uh, it will trigger every time I do a new push or new code, uh, committing it to the Cloud Source Repo, then it will trigger a new uh, build by Cloud Build. So this is part of the continuous deployment uh, aspect of thing. Then I will build a new container based on the latest code that I've committed. So in order to build a container, uh, what you need is uh, just Python file, Docker file, app YAML, and your requirements.txt file. So this would generate a, a new container or a new image that you can run. Uh, so this container would then be stored in container registry, uh, tagged by the latest tag. Uh, maybe we tag it with the latest tag called tags, uh, latest, as the latest tag. So what Cloud Run will do is that uh, it's very easy, hence why I love Cloud Run. We can just build Cloud Run based on the container that is available in container registry. So we'll be fetching the latest container, uh, then performing, if you want, perform rollback, you can perform rollback. But for my case, I, I'll do a gradual rollout. Uh, if it's the latest changes, I'll do a gradual rollout. Uh, and also uh, split the traffic to see, to test if it's working. Uh, so hence, uh, that's how easy, how it is, how easy it is to run Cloud Run because you can just build it based on the latest container. Uh, as long as you can skip this step, uh, there is other method to build Cloud Run also, but I chose to use the container method because it is the easiest method for me. Uh, and you can also commit your container to container registry from other tools. Uh, if you put your code in GitHub, you can do that too. Uh, but I use Cloud Source Repo, uh, it's much easier for me. I just put it there, then uh, it will trigger the latest build and build the latest container and just build the latest Cloud Run. So once we have Cloud Run ready, uh, it's ready already. It's ready to be uh, served to our user uh, to be used. Then let's get right into the, the use of Cloud Run. So uh, as the problem set, we need our vendor to send in the data. So I call it the external party. The, they will send in data in, in the form of POST request uh, through the, the URL that's available, uh, that is uh, available to them from the Cloud Run uh, endpoint. Then one day, once they send in the, the data through POST request, a Cloud Run uh, would, would be spin up to be able to handle that request. Uh, if there's 1,000 requests, 100 requests, then multiple Cloud Run, a Cloud Run would just scale up to handle that. So, so when the data is coming in, once we have the data ready, then we will have to transform uh, before loading it into GCS. So Cloud Run for me is just to handle the data and transforming it before loading it into uh, my cloud storage or my GCS. So once we store it in GCS, uh, we already, no, there's no point to talk about Cloud Run already, but I just want to expand it, the entire solution so people can uh, can see it. Uh, so after that, we will have a cloud function to, to cloud function and cloud scheduler. Cloud scheduler would uh, trigger the cloud function uh, to load the data from GCS into BigQuery. Uh, so this would be done in a timely manner, uh, 30 minutes, uh, I would say. And why I don't use Cloud Run to BigQuery? Uh, because cost involved, if you were streaming data directly to BigQuery, uh, it might cost uh, it might cost a lag. <laughs> so the way I do it is I put it into GCS first, then I use Cloud Function to to load the data into uh, BigQuery. Then once that's done, uh, then we have our uh, entire solution ready already. You have your data in your BigQuery, then you can just use uh, Data Studio to to fetch the latest data from BigQuery, and uh, then your stakeholders can enjoy and see the metric, how the metric move, how the numbers move in terms of, uh, of their daily numbers. La. So that's, uh, that's how you do it, uh, using Cloud Run to ingest data, 
and uh, putting into GCS and eventually uh, showing this data to your stakeholders and uh, using that to make decision. So can it do more? Uh, I would say yes, CloudRun can do more. Uh, in terms of asynchronous microservices, let's say if you have different CloudRun, uh, you want to have different CloudRun talking to uh, CloudRun together, you can do that. You can use PubSub to, to handle that. Uh, you can do that. Schedule maintenance job, yes, you can do that as well. Uh, especially, like I said just now, you, you can use Cloud Scheduler to trigger it, then you can use, uh, use it to, uh, to do schedule maintenance. Uh, web services, websites, uh, yes, you can use Cloud Run to host websites, uh, but, but here's the thing. If you want reliability, I think I would suggest you to go for App Engine because it's uh, more suited and it's already been there for a long time. I think uh, suggesting you to use App Engine would be better for websites uh, and App Engine can just handle uh, more, more stacks, I would, I would say. Uh, in terms of web services, REST API backend, uh, you can use it as well. Uh, like our case, I think we are using the same thing. Uh, data, lightweight data processing. Yes, you can. Let's say you have, if you have streaming data that comes in, uh, maybe you are running a video streaming website or you are trying to do uh, data transformation within your company, you can spin up a Cloud Run uh, and then use Cloud Run to handle that. I think some people use it to transform PDF to Google Sheet, if not mistaken. Uh, those are some of the lightweight data transformation that you can do with Cloud Run. Uh, and yeah, I think I think that's all from my side. Uh, this is a very short talk. Uh, I hope you learn a lot from this uh, and how, how to use Cloud Run uh, to your advantages and how uh, Cloud Run is useful for your case and also how, how to build a semi-life dashboard. Uh, you mentioned earlier that there are some uh, cases where people can use um, Google App Engine. So this is a question that's related to that. Um, when do you use Cloud Run instead of Google App Engine? So when can you use Cloud Run instead of Google App Engine? Uh, it would depend. Uh, let's put it into the context of uh, building websites, all right? Uh, so in terms of building websites, I think it would be better to go for Google App Engine. So to answer the question of when can we use Cloud Run instead of Google App Engine for website, uh, website, you need to be, you need your website to be available every single time. So App Engine always have a single instance running. So uh, because of that, your website is always available. Uh, so it's always there. But if it's on Cloud Run, uh, then your user might suffer because they would have to wait maybe a few milliseconds uh, for the website to spin up from your, uh, from the trigger. So I think in that case, you should use App Engine instead of Cloud Run. And given the fact that uh, there is Google App Engine flex environment now, I think it's more better. Uh, it provides a more, uh, how do we call it? Like a, a separation between when should you use App Engine or Cloud Run now? Yeah. I think we've got half the ease. Uh... This question is, will webhook be better in real-time data fetching or is it better to use PubSub? What do you think? I think, Hafiz, I think it would depends though. Uh, if it's internal, then I think internal services, I think PubSub will work. Uh, because for my case, it's, uh, it's outside like external vendor. So I choose to use webhook in, in, instead of uh, using PubSub. La. I just use webhook. Uh, and this web hook is on Cloud Run because I need it to run transformation. So yeah, I think specifically for my case, it's like that.